Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's an all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sin that he can't say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. The good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life.
Good morning. Good to see you all in the Lord's house today. Good to be here with you on this beautiful day that our Lord has once again made to him be the glory forever. Uh, today is the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany, and we uh, have one more Sunday in the Epiphany season left, that being next Sunday, Transfiguration Sunday, which, uh, of course, precedes uh, the Lenten season that starts February 22nd. So one week from this coming Wednesday, the Lenten journey begins. So it goes rather quickly, as we, as we well know. So um, pray God's blessing on you this morning as you hear God's word proclaimed as we continue in our messages based on 1 Corinthians, the epistle readings that have been uh, read the last uh, few weeks of Epiphany. And uh, so today we're going to talk about the fact that uh, we are uh, changed in order to grow. Uh, change is a good thing in that regard. So we want to learn that today in the Lord's Word. So welcome to all of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome to those watching on our Facebook Live. Uh, certainly glad to have you with us as well. A few announcements as we get going here this morning. Of course, we have our Praise Band Seventh Day that's leading us in worship. And uh, you notice we have a, a guest vocalist, a guest keyboardist or whatever, all that good stuff, uh, Hulisa. Uh, welcome, uh, Hulisa. Levinskis, I got her name right the first time, except her first name this morning, but their last name I got. Uh, but we welcome her today, uh, leading us uh, with the rest of the band, and thank you for serving and using your gifts to the glory of God uh, this morning uh, for us. Also, a reminder that the uh, Christian Care Collection takes place uh, after services, the service this morning, so you can place your donation in the boxes at the entrances to the church. And today is our last Super Bowl collection. Uh, we've been doing that the last couple of Sundays. All those, those donations go to the Amaro Community Food Pantry. And again, boxes for that are at the entrances to the church as well. I mentioned that Lent begins on February 22nd. And uh, we have our Lent and devotional booklets that are printed and, and are there for you already today uh, in the back, or they're out. So you want to pick those up. Those are devotions by, our Luth by Lutheran Hour Ministries. Grace Preschool is, Lutheran Preschool is selling geranium hanging baskets once again. Uh, always a great uh, fundraiser, a uh, great event, a uh, great thing for, for the preschool. $22 a basket. Orders are due by the 24th of this month, February 24th. Another reminder to you that the Y Discovery uh, uh, process uh, meeting is on Saturday, February 25th, here in the Fellowship Hall, 9 a.m. to 1230 p.m. You can watch, read the bulletin for details on that or encourage you, if you are able, to come to that on uh, the 25th. Um, and I believe those are all the announcements. I encourage you to read the other announcements in your bulletin as well today, saying what's all going on here at Grace. So with that, we are ready to worship, ready to receive the gifts of our God and respond to him with prayers and praises. Before we sing our opening song, Here I Am the Worship, we say again our me February memory verse. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. James 4, verse 17. With that, we now sing our opening song.
we stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. These are the words of your baptism. What is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word. What does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. In our lives, we struggle to follow Jesus' example of love, steadfastness, and faith. We have sown hatred, shown laziness, and known many doubts. We have not kept our eyes fixed on Jesus. Yet, our Heavenly Father invites us to draw near to his throne in confidence and ask for forgiveness. As God's baptized people, therefore, let's do that. Let us repent anew that we may arise to live. But first, let me ask, what is confession? Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution, that is, forgiveness, from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord has made known his salvation. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills sing for joy together before the Lord. He will judge the world with righteousness. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has made known his salvation. O Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequence of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading today for this, the sixth Sunday after Epiphany, from the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy, verses 15 through 20. See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, 
by walking in his ways and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules. Then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth, heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life that you and your offspring may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. This is the word of the Lord. And our psalm for this day is Psalm 119, verses 1 through 8. It says, Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your just and righteous decrees. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. We continue now with our music ministry and the song forever. Moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon him. One final breath he gave, his heaven looked to me, the sun. Sing hallelujah, 
The epistle is from the third chapter of 1 Corinthians, verses 1 through 9, and again will serve as our text for the sermon this day. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants, through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the verse and the Holy Gospel. Hallelujah, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going out with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife except on the ground of sexual immorality, 
makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. And before we sing our song of the day, if our children in the church today in this service come down for a brief children's message. We have some. All right. And you know the drill. Where to sit and so on. Any more? Going once, going twice? Nope. Okay. All right. You see what I brought with me today? Oh. So everybody know what this is? Do you know what this is? It's a plant. Do you know what kind of plant it is? It's a, it has a flower coming off it. Do you know that this is a cactus plant? Is that cool? Because we often think of cactus being in the desert. But here's a nice little... I got this as a gift... I think it was a couple of years ago now, and it's still growing. And uh, did you know that cactus plants need water, like every other plant? Sometimes we think that they don't need, much, need water or not much at all, but it does need water. Not a lot, but if it doesn't get water, it, of course, will shrivel up and dry up. But if it gets too much water, that's not good either. So it has to be just right. So this one's been watered perfectly, and it's not because... Pastor does a good job watering because I often forget about it. I have a great person that does this for me. It's our janitor, uh, Miss Annie. She comes in and takes care of it. So I thank her a lot for that, keeping it alive and well. That's very nice. So it's a nice thing in my office. And, of course, here's a little watering can that reminds us that, yes, we have to water that plant. But that's true about any type of plant that you may have or outside. But let me ask you guys, um, so... That's great, right? Water and so on. Um, but what else is needed for plants to grow besides water? What, sun, sunlight, very good. Um, what else? What, what are we breathing right now? Air, okay, so oxygen. Uh, you said sunlight. And what else has to be necessary for a plant to grow? What's it? Dirt, soil, excellent. So three for three. So all those things, right? Now, those are important, but guess who made all of those things? God made them. So guess, guess who gets the credit for any type of growth that happens with a plant or grass or crops, things like that? Who gets the ultimate credit? It's God, right? Because he made everything. Now, he uses things, like we said, sunlight and all that. Of course, he created that as well. But he also can use people, too, right, to water that. Now, think about that. And think about now, you believe in Jesus, right? You believe in him. You trust in him. Who's responsible for that? Who gave you that faith to believe in him? It's God again. That's right. It's the Holy Spirit. And he did, gave that gift to you in baptism and throughout your, your life as, and as you're growing who are other people that are in your life that are helping you grow in your faith and your trust in Jesus? Name some people. Who, who brought you? Who, who, who are you living with at home? Who's, bringing, who's teaching you and all that stuff at home? Mom and dad? How about Sunday school? Sunday school teachers? How about church? Thank you, Pastor. And I'll get to teach you in confirmation someday. That'll be great. And all of that, anyone else that you can think of? Maybe some grandparents or maybe, maybe some good Christian friends. But you see, all those people are people that are used by God to help you grow in your faith. But guess who gets the credit? 
It's God, that's right. And that's what we're looking at today. So one of the things we might say in church is after something good happens that we know God's responsible, we say, to God be the glory. Can you say that with me? Say that, to God be the glory? And let's have the congregation help us say that too, because it, it sounds much even better when everybody says it. So, to God be the glory. Very good. So I'm going to say a couple of things here that we're after each phrase, we're going to say that all together. All right? Ready to go? All right. So uh, repeat, uh, when I say, Jesus died for all my sins, when someone becomes a Christian and is baptized, to God be the glory. How about uh, when a person repents of his or her sin and receives God's forgiveness? Excellent. Or when a church is filled with people. Oh, there goes my phone. Uh, when the church is filled with people, or even if it's not so full, yet we're glad they're here, what do we say? To God be the glory. So you see, in all those things, right, God gets all the credit and all the glory because he's the one at work in our hearts to keep us close to him in faith and trust. And so that's why we always want to hear from, hear his word, and study his word and grow in his word because he wants us always to know him and to have certainty that we're going to be with him in heaven, okay? So again, to God be the glory for all these things. Before I send you back to your, your family, let's, uh, let's close with a word of prayer. I'll just lead us in that. And, we, and I'll say, dear God, we thank you for, for my faith. Thank you for my pastors, teachers, and parents. Thank you for making my faith grow. But thank you most of all for Jesus. And it's in his name we pray and we say, amen. Thank you very much for coming up this morning. I listen, carefully to God, listen closely to God's word today. We'll continue now with our song of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God today that we take into our heartfelt and devout consideration is our epistle reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 to 9. You heard read a moment ago, and I'll refer to a several verses in the text this morning in the sermon. This is God's holy word. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, my dear friends. You know, it's probably considered an understatement, but it's true nonetheless. Babies need to be changed. Oh, yeah. You and I have been there. We've done that. And sometimes we are on this end of doing the changing. If you're a parent or even a grandparent, you know what I mean. But a baby we know cannot change himself. Sure, they grow out of it eventually. But in the meantime, if babies are to grow up and be healthy, they need a change. Well, in his first letter to the Christians at Corinth, the Apostle Paul was telling these new believers that they needed a change because they were babies, they were infants in the faith. They knew and they believed that Jesus Christ was their Lord and Savior. They had heard and they believed the simple gospel message that was proclaimed to them by St. Paul. And to God be the glory that they came to faith and they trusted in Jesus and had etern have eternal life. Unfortunately, though, they were still very immature spiritually. They were spiritual babies that needed to grow up spiritually. And for that to happen, they needed a change. They couldn't remain like this forever because it would be spiritually harmful to them. And yet that change would not come from something inside themselves as if something they could do by their own power. Just like babies cannot change themselves, this change could only come from God. It could only come from him who works all things through his word and through his sacraments. It's God who would provide the change needed in order for them to grow. Not only for them, but also for us. Yes, it doesn't take long to find out that babies need lots and lots of changes. And likewise, we know as well that as we read our text, that this isn't the first time that we've been changed. No, for many of us, we know that this happened many, many years ago. In fact, every Christian, when he or she has come to faith, has been changed from what they were naturally to something quite different, to something that's much better, something of which our God is quite pleased. By nature, as we, we confess, we're sinful and unclean. By nature, we once were born in sin. Every cute little baby is really all not that cute because in each, inside each one is a hater of God. Each one is born an enemy of God. But when a soul becomes a believer in Jesus, the change is wonderful. A new person is now created inside that person who now loves God, who now trusts God above all things. And that's every Christian. And it's the work in which God our Savior has done and received all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. That, of course, was true of the Apostle Paul and, of course, too, of the Corinthians themselves. There had been a great change in Paul. We know Paul was once named Saul the Pharisee, who was on a mission to destroy the Christian church if he could. And when he was on the road to Damascus in order to take prisoner anyone who confessed Jesus, the Lord, we know, appeared to him visibly, causing Saul to fall to the ground. And from that moment on, the Lord Jesus changed Paul's hard heart to now be a passionate proclaimer and lover of the Savior and his salvation. That was a true miracle. And he proclaimed passionately that Jesus was the only Savior. He complained, he proclaimed that Jesus was the one who won eternal salvation for all people. And the Corinthian congregation had come to believe that truth, too. Paul came to that city the first time, and for 18 months he shared with them the word of God. He proclaimed Christ. He openly 
did that. He did not hide anything. And by the Holy Spirit's power, people did come to know and believe Jesus. And that was a true miracle because remember what kind of city Corinth was. Known for its sexual immorality, very godless. And yet, a little church comes out of it because of the message, because of the word. It wasn't just Paul, though, that the Lord used to bring that, saint, that saving gospel to them. After Paul left, another man came by the name of Apollos. And he continued on in that mission work. God used Apollos now to water the seed of which Paul planted. It's kind of like pastors. A pastor, let's say, is called to a new mission church. And he's there for maybe a few years, but then the Lord calls him to go somewhere else. And another pastor comes, and he picks up where that previous pastor left off. But the same message is, is there. The gospel. Christ crucified and risen. And Paul says in verse 5 that both he and Apollos were servants of God through whom you believed. Each had proclaimed the same gospel that changes people miraculously. And while they were both distinct individuals with different gifts, the Lord used both of them with ne that never-changing word to do this work which only the Lord begins and brings to completion. But what was true for Paul, what was true for the Corinthians, is also true for us. You and I have been changed with the life-giving word. Here at Grace, the Lord has brought many to faith in him by the waters of holy baptism. Many of you have been baptized here. You've been members here all your life. And by God's life-giving word through baptism, he made a relationship with us. One that we would never have wanted ourselves. We've been changed for the better. I know as Lutherans, we're not big, big uh, promoters of change. We don't like change. We like to remain the same. We like things to be just as is because it doesn't, have to, it doesn't make us think then. We don't have to think much. That's good in some ways, but in other ways it isn't very good. Change is good, especially when it comes to our faith, knowing and growing in that faith. It's kind of like if you paint your house a different color. Maybe you enjoy what you have in your living room. You like that paint color all those years, and then one day your wife says, we need to do something different. And then you say, why? It looks fine. It's just fine. Why? And you know, once it's done, it looks much better. It looks fresh, and it gives you a little bit of a, maybe a uptick in your, your life. You might feel a little bit better of things. Change is good. It didn't change the essence of the house. The house is the same, but it now it makes things look a little more fresh. Well, the reality is, my dear friends, that you and I are still babies in need of change. And that's what Paul talks about in verse 1. As he addresses these spiritual babies in Corinth, he says, I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk and not solid food because you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? Even though they had been changed, even though they had been brought to faith in Christ, they still needed ongoing change. One that would make them, take them from mere milk to solid food. Because in many ways, they were still acting according to the flesh. And they were being very spiritually immature. Paul mentions a couple of those things. He says there's jealousy, there's rivalries, there's these petty arguments over who was the best leader of that church. And that was causing division, even though Paul and Apollos themselves were not divided at all. How are we like the people of Corinth? Well, again, we've already been changed. We've been brought to faith in Christ. To God be the glory. But the fact is that we still need to be changed too. Let me ask, do you have any rivalries with others here? Or jealousies with, about somebody else? Or cutting down others with words? 
These things are things of the flesh. These are things of the old nature, the old Adam, which we just confessed, or what the baptism says, that the old Adam in us should, by daily contrition and repentance, be drowned and die with all lusts and desires. Many times we like just letting them go. But that's behaving in a human and not spiritual, God-pleasing way. That's the way of the world, my friends. These are the ways that are, we are separated from God and one another, and it's the way that, if not checked, leads to death. That's why it's so serious. We, people of the flesh by nature, need to hear that one became flesh for all people. Christ Jesus made the change that was needed. Jesus, the unchanging God, became flesh and blood for us to become sin for all jealousies, rivalries, and for all who act according to the flesh in a merely human way. Since each will receive wages according to his labor, we rejoice in what our Savior has done for us. The wage of his labor on the cross is full and free forgiveness. The wage of his labor in and out of the grave is new life right now and one that is never ending. These wages, these gifts are all distributed to us through the very means that he has given. The water of holy baptism that marks us as redeemed children of God. The bread and wine of the Lord's Supper to give us the very body and blood of Jesus Christ for forgiveness, life, salvation, and a strengthening of that same faith to live for him now in this world. It's the food that we babies need to grow and of which we are sustained. We know that hunger and malnutrition are very serious issues in the United States and around the world. Some 8.5 million Americans experience hunger on a daily basis, while 17 million children worldwide suffer from acute malnutrition, which is a deadly condition. Without sufficient food, without sufficient nutrients, and without sufficient protein, there will be growth failure. One form of growth failure is called wasting. That's why we get the term, you're wasting away if somebody has lost weight. They say that. But that's where it comes from. It's characterized by rapid weight loss. Another form is stunting, which is a slow and cumulative debilitating process. It's spiritual malnutrition that Paul is addressing. The Christians in Corinth should have moved on from mother's milk to solid food, but the fact that there was still jealousy and rivalries among them demonstrated that they needed the one food that nourishes peace and harmony, the same food that we need to be fed, the rich nutrients of the gospel, forgiveness, life, and salvation. Friends in Christ, this is the food we have received and continue to receive here in this place. That's what is essential for us. And it's how God changes us. Because he's the only one who can bring this change. We cannot do it ourselves. But when he does change us, guess what happens? We grow. And my friends, God is always about growth. He always desires that we grow closer to him, most of all, in relationship. And God provides this growth because he's a God of grace and mercy. He works through people. He works through redeemed sinners like your pastor to be mere planters and waterers of his word. Consider that St. Paul and Apollos were nothing apart from Christ, and neither am I. I'm nothing apart from Christ or any pastor who serves God's people. But there's always growth because the word of God brings that growth. And the church, of course, is God's field. And it doesn't mean God doesn't want growth in numbers. I know people lament the fact that our pews are not full or that more people are not coming to the Christian faith. Does that mean God isn't growing the church? No, that's not at all what it means. And it's not all, all and end all. All things, though, God is at work, and it's his word that does it. We know we're still in winter, even though the weather is a little bit nicer today. But we know it's not even close to planting time. Fields and gardens are a long way off from being plowed and tilled before the seed is planted in the ground. And yet right now in the church, right now it's planting and watering time. 
This season of Epiphany is all about the proclamation and planting of the seed of the word, which is Jesus, so that others may know him by faith, and for those who are already in the faith to become ever closer to him until the day that he comes back or the day that the Lord decides to call you home to himself. And so what do we do? We faithfully seed the word of the gospel. We water that seed with the same word and sacraments, and we see how the Lord causes it to sprout and to grow, to bring brand new life, new believers, heartened believers to him. I understand that you may not be very excited about change in this world, whether it be about the weather, perhaps, or about the, what color the walls should be painted. But my friends, our God is the one who loves change. The change from bringing lost and condemned sinners to saving faith in Christ for salvation. He loves enlivening our less than enthusiastic faith to being passionate for what truly matters, his word and eternal salvation. May God grant that we continue to be faithful to his calling us as change agents in this sinful world as we witness and as we grow in Christ our Lord. To him be all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may God's peace, which surpasses all of our understanding, guard our hearts and our minds through faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Having heard God's word, we now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we want to keep in prayer uh, Jason Kralovitz, who will be having surgery in Milwaukee at Freighter tomorrow, I believe. Also, Mary Jane Kettlewell, who was having her knee surgery, which was scheduled, is now scheduled to Tuesday of this week, February 14th. Keep Grace Bowles and her family in our prayers, as well as Gloria Donsky, if she recovers from a fall. And uh, we also want to pray for those who had suffered from uh, the earthquake in Syria. You probably read about that in the news. Uh, thousands of people have been killed in that. And then, uh, of course, that police officer that was killed in Milwaukee. Uh, keep that family in our prayers. It also has pleased Almighty God to summon out of this world to himself in heaven the soul of Julie Crum, who was called home suddenly yesterday morning. And so uh, funeral arrangements are pending at Miller Funeral Home, and they were making arrangements this morning with the funeral home, and we'll announce that as that comes along. But we certainly keep uh, that family in our prayers this morning as well. So with that, let us go now to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to to their needs. Almighty God, the seas roar and the rivers clap their hands because you come to judge the earth. Receive our thanks that you declare us righteous by water and the word and grant that we would live in that baptismal grace until you come in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you make us your children in baptism and desire that we grow and mature in the faith. Bless pastors, teachers, and parents, and all who teach your word and give us a constant desire to hear and obey it. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you condemn unrighteous anger, even as you command, you shall not murder. You have poured out your righteous anger on your Son at the cross, that we might be reconciled to you. Where there is division, move us to repent and seek reconciliation with one another, so that we might live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. God of life, you condemn sexually impure thoughts, even as you command, you shall not commit adultery. Deliver us from lustful thoughts and defend us from the temptations of pornography that we may lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do. Lord, in your mercy. O God, the author of truth, you command us, 
you shall not swear falsely. Give us faith to acknowledge your word, and by your strength do what you command, Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all, you judge the peoples in righteousness and equity. Give wisdom to our nation's authorities, preserve us from unjust division, and cause us to love one another. Lord, in your mercy. Lord our God, you are our life and our length of days. Sustain and strengthen those who suffer sickness and affliction. We ask you, Lord, to be with Jason as he undergoes surgery tomorrow, and as well as being with uh, and Mary Jane as her surgery on Tuesday, as well as Grace and Glory and all others, Lord, that we name before you, that you bring them your peace and your strength and healing. And Lord, comfort all who mourn, including the family of, of Julie Crum, uh, as they deal with another a loss. Lord, grant them, again, your sustaining comfort and peace and a comfort of the promise of everlasting life in Christ. And so too, Lord, remind us that we are ever mortal, that we can keep our hearts prepared to fall asleep in faith and not take you for granted now in this earthly life. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you give growth to the church by your holy word and sacraments. Preserve your people from the wisdom of the world, which creates division and follows after the winds of, our, of the age. Unite the church in a common confession of your truth. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we see things like the earthquake in Syria and uh, the police officer killed in Milwaukee. And again, we're reminded uh, of, these, of the tragedies and, and, and uh, things of life that, are, that happen. Uh, Lord, we know that these are things you did not create, you did not want to happen, but because of sin and living in a broken world, we see these take place. Lord, in that, to that end, though, we ask you to come to the aid of your people who are in suffering, and especially with our brothers and sisters in Christ in that part of the world. Uh, may your gospel come upon all and know that you are with them in this time of difficulty, as well as the police officer's family as well in Milwaukee, that they know your, your uh, protection and comfort for them right now. Be with all of our officers in our community. Well, keep them safe from harm and danger. Uh, we thank you for their service and all that they do to help and protect and serve communities all around us. Again, Lord, we commend them to your care and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated now as we honor our Lord Jesus with our tithes and offering.
Please stand. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing song, Grace Like Rain. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that it saves a wretch like me. was lost but now I'm found was blind but now I see so clearly and hallelujah grace like rain falls down on me hallelujah all my sins are washed away
in the 